Summary of Tracks, A Woman's Solo Trek Across 1700 by Robin Davidson. A young Australian woman named Robin Davidson tells the story. She comes to Alice Springs with her dog Diggity, a small bag, and six dollars. Davidson wants to find and train a group of camels that she can take on a desert trip, even though she doesn't have any of the skills or experience she needs. Davidson thinks that racism against Aboriginal people is very common in Alice Springs, but she doesn't think that Aboriginal people are as dangerous and stupid as everyone says they are. After getting a job at the local pub, Davidson moves in there. She quickly finds out about the local men who might be able to help her get camels. The first man she meets, Saleh Muhammad, turns her down when he sees how little she knows. Finally, Kurt, the third man, runs a clean ranch and offers to train Davidson if she buys him a camel for a low price. Davidson agrees to the deal, and even though Kurt's mean and violent behavior becomes clear very quickly, she learns a lot from him about how to handle and train camels. She also makes friends with Gladdy, Kurt's nice wife. Soon after, though, Davidson decides she can't take Kurt's bossy behavior any longer and quits, going back to her job at the pub. In Alice Springs, Davidson learns more about the horrible racism and sexism that people there face. Kurt tries to get Davidson to go back to his home, and she agrees after discovering poop on her pillow. Kurt and Davidson get along a little better this time, and she loves getting to know all of the camels and their unique personalities. Over time, Davidson makes friends with a group of people who live in an old house nearby. She turns to her new friends for help as Kurt continues to hurt her badly. Davidson loses her temper with Kurt again one day and quits her job. At first, she is shocked by how much time has passed without her getting any camels. But she is delighted when Sally Muhammad offers her a job and says he will give her two camels in exchange for a few months of work. Sally helps her learn more about camels and gives her hope that her trip will go well. However, as the anniversary of her move to Alice Springs draws near, Davidson isn't sure if she should keep going with such a tough task. She goes back to Queensland to see an old friend, who tells her the trip is worth it. Davidson picks out two camels from Sally to take back to Alice Springs. She chose a young female named Zalika and an older female named Kate. Her friends leave and leave her the house to live in until they can sell it, so she gets used to living alone and is fine with it. Davidson also becomes friends with Ada Baxter, a neighbor who is kind and aboriginal. Jenny and Tully are two young people Davidson meets who are also interested in aboriginal rights and become close friends with her. Davidson is glad to have people who are there for her, but she starts to feel down again, in part because she still has to work with Kurt sometimes. She also meets some aboriginal kids in the area through Gladdy and is saddened by the racism they have to deal with. Clivy, one of the kids, is sent to a reform school even though she is smart and capable, and Davidson says that the schools and other local systems are not set up to help the Aboriginal people. At the same time, Davidson is worried that she might not be able to leave for her trip at all. Kate has a big wound that is getting worse even though Davidson works with the neighborhood doctors to treat it. Sally comes to see Davidson one day and tells him that Zalika looks like she is pregnant. Even though Davidson is excited about the camel's birth, she knows Kate won't be able to get better. In order to end Kate's pain, she shoots her. Because Kate died and because she is still afraid of Kurt, Davidson is getting more and more sad. There is one night when she even thinks about committing suicide, but with Gladys' help, she stops herself. She quickly leaves Kurt and goes her own way. Then Davidson is even more scared of Kurt, who now seems totally crazy. All of a sudden, Kurt leaves. He sold the land to some strangers who want Davidson to help them with the camels. As she shows them how to take care of the camels, Dookie, a usually friendly young bull, charges Davidson. She barely manages to hold him down. The new owners are scared, so they quickly sell her Dookie and another bull named Bub. Davidson is very happy that she now has all three camels she needs for her trip. Davidson is still getting ready while having fun with her friends. She learns more about her animals and gets better at finding them when they get lost. 
The camels then get lost one morning and Davidson can't find them. She sees it as a sign that the trip is meant to happen when she finally does. Soon after, Davidson meets Rick, a young photographer, who persuades her to ask National Geographic for money to pay for her trip. She writes them a letter while drunk and then forgets about it. Davidson gives Zalika's baby the name Goliath and starts training him right away after the birth. Davidson plans a practice hike to the town of Utopia, which is several days' walk away, to get ready for the trip. On the way, she finds out how much work her packs and supplies need as she goes along with Jenny and Tully in the terrible heat. Davidson stays in Utopia for a few weeks to make the last few preparations for the real trip. When she sees how much everyone else seems to care about her trip, she starts to question whether it's right for her to want to be totally alone. Davidson, meanwhile, hears that National Geographic has accepted her offer and, along with Rick, goes to Sydney to complete the deal. At first, she is happy, but she quickly learns that having to answer to the magazine and have Rick take pictures will ruin the experience she had planned to be completely private. Even though she feels betrayed, she keeps making the last few plans back in Alice Springs. Her father and sister come to visit, and she finally leaves for the trip. She is struck by the beauty of the desert and the fact that she is by herself. Around the next turn, she sees Rick taking pictures with his camera. Davidson loves being alone once Rick is gone. She settles into a daily routine of taking care of the camels, handling the packs, and sticking to the plan she has made for herself. Davidson quickly gets to an aboriginal town, where she thinks about how terrible it was for white people to colonize other countries. She likes getting to know the people there and feels stronger before going on to Ayers Rock, where she will meet Rick again. She starts to doubt her own bravery and strength along the way, especially after she lost her anger with Bub and beat him up. Davidson relies on strict habits and plans to deal with her stress. She treats the trip like a 9-to-5 job and checks her watch often. As she gets closer to Ayers Rock, she sees the tourists and feels bad that they don't understand how beautiful the desert really is. She likes seeing the rock, and she's shocked to see Jenny with Rick when they go to see each other. Even though she's glad to see nice faces, she doesn't like how they're in her space. She is also shocked by how different Rick's pictures from the beginning of the trip are from what she felt. Davidson keeps going with Rick, but she keeps fighting with him and thinks that his shots make her trip seem less real. They try to work out their disagreements and become friends in the end. Over time, they start having sexual relations as well, but Davidson feels bad that she let him get mentally involved in a trip that she had planned to be just the two of them. Dookie hurts his leg when he falls as Rick and Davidson get closer to the town of Docker. Davidson stays in Docker for six weeks while he heals. At one point, he even flies back to Alice Springs to talk to a doctor. Davidson also meets wild, dangerous bull camels for the first time in Docker. With the help of some aboriginal men, she shoots and kills them. It breaks her heart, but she doesn't know how to keep herself safe. At the end of her time in Docker, she goes to a traditional aboriginal dance and is happy to be accepted by the women there. But when she is told she has to pay to take part, her happiness goes away. She thinks she'll always be on the outside of Aboriginal society, watching from the outside. Soon after Davidson leaves, he comes across another group of wild bull camels and has to kill them again. She keeps going even though she is completely worn out and starting to lose touch with reality. After being close to going crazy for a few days, Davidson finds an old village and gets water from the mill there, which makes him feel better. She sees a group of wild camels and scares them away without hurting any of them. The freedom and beauty of the camels inspire her. As Davidson keeps walking, she meets a group of friendly older aboriginal men. Eddie, one of them, decides to walk with her for the two days to get to her next location, Pibaliadiera. Eddie and Davidson really enjoy being with each other, and Davidson thinks Eddie is smarter and more stable than most white people even though Aboriginal society is generally thought of as primitive. They quickly get to the village of Pipaliadira, where they meet Glendale, a white man who works as a guide to the Aboriginal people who live there. 
Davidson learns more about the huge problems and systemic abuse that Aboriginal communities face through Glendale. Eddie's wife comes to visit at one point, and Davidson is struck by how warmly and properly he treats her. This makes him think about how women actually hold a lot of power in Aboriginal communities. Eddie chooses to keep going with Davidson to Warburton, which is 200 miles away. As they walk, Davidson starts to let go of her old fixation on plans and getting things done quickly. Instead, she starts to trust Eddie's more natural, laid-back approach to time and progress. He also teaches her to pay attention to the land around her, and she feels like she learns a lot more about how nature works and how to keep things in balance. The other Aboriginal people they meet are also much more willing to get to know Davidson when Eddie is around. Davidson is always impressed by how happy and fun Eddie is, even though Eddie has had a long and hard life. Because Eddie doesn't want to be photographed, they get into a fight when they meet Rick in Warburton. Eddie's ride home is delivered by Glendale, and the group stays in Warburton for a week. Davidson is happier than she has been for most of the trip. Davidson begins the last big part of her trip. For the next month, she will be by herself and nothing else. She is thrilled with what she has learned about the land and spends many days enjoying the scenery. It all comes together in a fun role in a dust bowl with Diggity and the camels. So, she gives up her wish to keep everything in order on the trip and leaves her clock behind. She is thankful for the lessons she has learned in the desert and hopes she will remember them when she gets back to civilization. She can even fight off a wild camel bull without hurting it. Davidson also talks about some of the letters she wrote to friends while she was by herself during this time. She never sent them, though. Even though the letters talk about how much they love and enjoy the desert, they also talk about how hard and dangerous it is. At this point, Davidson feels like she has lost all manners and doesn't care about how she looks or how to act around other people. She goes to a place called Glenel and starts to notice that some parts of the land are being overgrazed or changed in other ways by people. She stays with a nice family in Glenel for a while to rest. Then she starts her three-week journey to the town of Willuna, which will be the end of her trip by herself. The scenery that Davidson sees continue to amaze her. She knows that she has changed a lot since she started, and she is filled with gratitude for everything she has learned. But just as Davidson thinks she knows her place in the world, Diggity eats a poisoned dingo bait and Davidson has to shoot her. Such a happy ending for Davidson. After that, Davidson keeps walking around in a daze. It seems like a dream, and she doesn't pay much attention to anything until she finds a quiet place she calls an outback amphitheater. Davidson dances wildly there to deal with her sadness, and even though she's tired, she feels clean afterward. Almost right away, she gets close enough to some stations that she runs into cars full of reporters who rush around her, asking questions and taking pictures. Davidson is terrified by all the attention and the simple, sexist idea that she is a strange camel lady. Rick shows up and helps Davidson deal with the press. He also introduces her to a guy in the area named Peter Muir, who lets them stay in his house outside of Willuna. There are also Jenny and Tully who show up to hide with Davidson. She also gets a lot of letters from people she doesn't know who heard about her trip. Some are strange, but most are positive. Davidson stays in Willuna for a few days and then drives through the countryside to remember what she missed while she was sad about Diggity. She then goes on with Rick to the seaside town where her trip ends. The last leg goes pretty quickly. They laugh at the camel's pranks and get along great. Rick leaves for a while, and Davidson finally gets to the farm where some friends have decided to take the camels in. Davidson and the camels finally get to the sea with the help of their new owners. That's where Rick meets them again. As Davidson sees the camels play on the beach, she can't believe the trip is almost over. She spends a week with Rick at the beach and is very happy with how her trip turned out, but she is afraid to go back to the real world. Finally, the camel's new owners show up and take them back to the farm. Davidson says sad goodbye to them. Davidson goes to the town of Carnarvon with Rick. 
When she gets there, she finds more reporters waiting for her. At a welcome dinner, Davidson is sad and wants to go back to the desert because he feels like he can't handle normal life again. In hindsight, Davidson says the trip wasn't that hard after all, the hardest part was learning to trust herself and begin. About the author Robin Davidson was born in Queensland, Australia. Davidson's mother killed herself when she was 11 years old, and she was then sent to a girls' boarding school in Brisbane. Tracks gives us hints about how hard her life was. She was 26 years old when she started her journey through the desert. When Tracks came out in 1980, it made her famous. Since then, she's had a long career as a travel writer, and a lot of her work is about her time with different wandering groups. She has also written a book, a collection of essays, and another biography. She lives in Castlemaine, Victoria, Australia. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.